separation between rural and urban centers in both developed and developing economies globally is thinning out by the day on account of development of critical infrastructure, making them interdependent in socioeconomic and cultural ties. Infrastructure is a major thrust in policy framework in most countries that integrates its peoples. Little wonder deficit in it has led to very vocal demands in several quarters around the world for government's increased funding of such infrastructures. Availability of functional infrastructure such as good roads, schools, markets, housing, sports centers, health facilities and many more is essential to rural urban integration. Smart Delta. In the home front in Nigeria, rural urban integration remains an ongoing development as administration after administration has continued to seek ways of bridging the gap between the rural and urban areas through the building of critical infrastructure that encourage integration. What makes an urban center? You have good roads, you have hospitals, you have schools, you have uh, good housing estates, and that's it, and you have electricity. So once you have all of this, that is a critical component of an urban center. Rural centers cannot on their own metamorphose into urban centers, ex not even by encroachment or expansion, but by creating critical infrastructure. Otherwise, you begin to have slums annexed to urban centers. In Delta State, South South Nigeria, since the inception of the Senator Ifanyo Kowa led administration in 2015, a lot has been done to regenerate the economy through rural urban integration. Besides the building of critical infrastructure, the administration has paid priority attention to the construction of rural urban link road, one very vital infrastructure that has brought both urban and rural dwellers together is the Stephen Keshi Stadium. Athletes and school children from all over the state either come to train or participate in competitions like the recently concluded Delta State School Sports Festival. Sport unify people. So with this facility, there's no doubt that people from rural areas have been coming to urban areas to engage in sports. So with that, they may have met friends and then build relationship. With what is happening today, it's going to encourage our boys, it's going to encourage our children to move higher and um, of course it will expose them to those very good uh, scouts who will need to build them up for future use. What Delta State is doing today is very key, it's very important and it will help to encourage them to grow the field of sports. So one of the ways to lift Nigeria out of poverty is through sports. The youth has flair for sports. You can see the joy of the youth coming to this stadium, watching international matches, national matches, local matches. So the coming of this stadium to Asaba and environment is a blessing to the environment. This stadium will be able to bring people from different states, from Wari, from Mugeli, from different places together. I want to appreciate Okowa for doing well. During such competitive atmosphere, apart from the camaraderie between peoples living in both rural and urban areas, it is also an opportunity to display goods and services across local council divides marketing peculiarities of a people as well as showcase cultural peculiarities. Facilities like this in the state brings about other people coming into the state. I'm coming here for the first time, I've seen people that I've not seen. People from different, from this own part of the country, the NPFL players, the national team likewise, they come here because of the good facilities. So it brings about people coming together to not just enjoy themselves likewise, but to get to see new places. I need to appreciate the government for putting the facility up to this standard. And a lot of Nigerians are benefiting from here. I actually use this place to promote my brands uh, in previous matches. So I think it's commendable. And I thank the government for that. Before this time, this stadium was nowhere to be found. But today, this administration brought light, brought happiness to Delta by building this stadium for us. As you can see, we have brought in so many international machines to this place. The economy is growing. If you go outside the gate, people are trading on minerals, people are trading on their clothes. Different business is going outside there, so there's money coming to the state, money coming to the capital because of this stadium. This stadium has brought lots of things to this state. 
it is only when you get things like this that it moves the economy it makes the economy grow if you check it very well you notice that people of the state they are very much happy having such facility here so i believe that the stadium has really gone a long way to improve the economy in Delta State. The business side of this integration is aptly captured by Siri Mulyani, Indonesia's Minister of Finance, who explained in a public forum that urbanization and rural development rights is essentially about sharing prosperity. It is about ensuring that the benefits of development and growth reach all citizens, whether they live in cities, small towns, or rural settlements. Most people who benefit business patronage during sports fiesta agree that it is time for sharing prosperity. We really appreciate our governor for making it possible, especially at the stadium. Anytime there is playing ball or any activity, we used to save a lot of money. After the sales, we are happy. So God bless the governor. If any occasion is in the stadium, we make more sales than shop. That is why anytime we occasion day, we rush to come and see a market. So what they do for stadium, we they work well, well, we they make money well, well. That time, no can come and fast, but we go see, no go walk, waiting past, no they walk before. The governor, they try well, well. God go bless and and this kind of person we need. In line with the thoughts of Siri Mulyani, the Akawalid administration since 2015 has been doing a lot to foster rural urban integration. The foremost in line of such action was setting up of agencies and committees such as Asaba Capital Territory Development Authority. The agency liaises between the capital territory and adjoining communities and council areas for seamless development and integration. The desire of His Excellency Senator Dr. Fanny Okowa is to have what happens in Asaba happen in Isela Zaba, happen in Ibuzo, happen in Okwana happen in Ubulu. In that sense, you have everybody being part of the same capital territory. You will no longer have people imagining that they have to leave Ubulu to Asaba before they can be well treated, before they can have the functionalities that makes a beautiful city. This capital agency that Dr. Okowa set up is benefiting everybody that is even living in Asaba. Because people like me here, I work with the agents, we sweep the road. It gives employment to people, many people. And we use the money to train our children, even feed ourselves, pay house rent. So it's good to us. This agency, Governor Kowa, have set up has really been, I've really, in fact, I'm a beneficiary from it because one, for the past years now, we have been working as a young girl with the pay I've been using to take care of myself. And it also helped us to have a clean environment that will lead us to good health. Bodies such as the Peace and Conflict Resolution Committee have the mandate to resolve conflicts between warring communities with an eye for mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and integration. The mandate is, Delta is one. All it does, it makes sure that the trace natural districts is being carried along. Because as of today, Delta is very peaceful. It is peaceful because the smart governor who believes in building a stronger delta believes that you cannot achieve peace when you are differentiating people. We are grateful to God for what His Excellency is doing about peace because no community or society can develop in the absence of peace. So we thank His Excellency for a good job he's doing. Okoa. Since his government, Delta has been very, very peaceful. Uh, we pray for the governor of Delta State as he since protects his people. Since Governor Kowa came on board, Delta has been more, more peaceful. He's really trying and uh, we like that. Smart Delta. The better run, run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is the do ye better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is the do. I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth say them hila. Okowa. I see good roads everywhere in Delta. Make the people say them cola. Let's go, man.
Empowerment for the farmers in Delta. Food and quality education in Delta. Well equipped hospitals here in Delta. Uh, peace and security, no legal. Come live in Delta. Let me a trailer Come in Delta. In Delta. But I tell you, like you Come the explore the potentials of our state. Another critical infrastructure that bodes well for rural-urban integration is good and effective roads network. Good roads interconnectivity is fundamental to the socio-economic growth, development, inclusiveness and integration of any society. This is because roads infrastructure provides link not only between communities but also links producers to markets, workers to jobs, students to schools, and even the sick to health facilities. They also stimulate economic responses in terms of trade, location choices, and ultimately reshape development outcomes that policymakers seek. Roads are very critical in terms of rural integration. Today in Delta State, so many of the communities have been properly connected with a good access road. And this, of course, has given an opportunity for the people to come together in terms of a cultural exchange, in terms of social activities, which, of course, encourage coexistence among debtors and not debtors living in data states. Every week you must go to a mechanic workshop to repair your car. But since he entered, he was able to repair the roads. And not only that, there's street light all over. We are happy. Good road is actually very important for the development of every community. Kudos to Dr. Ifai Okowa. I've traveled to Akuku, to many places. He has started many roads. That's what we call him Ekweme, and he's the original Ekweme. So we are proud of him. Good and quality roads infrastructure also shortens time and distances between trading partners which encourages trade and integration. We are persistent farmers. Obviously, the road will enhance bringing out the yeeds, the goods, the yams, the cassava into the urban area. And it will improve the economy because they work so hard to develop their farms. And the yeeds will fetch a lot of money that will increase the economy. This road is going to open a lot of opportunities for both entrepreneurs, retailers and all that because now it will bring a lot of attraction to this environment. Because of this road, a lot of people will live around here and it will boost economic activities around this place. If you want development, the first thing you do is road. Road brings settlements. It brings a lot of good things. Communication becomes easy. Transportation becomes easy. So it's going to boost the economy of that state. We only worry for we just park and go because we've lost hope for the day. But now, even if the rain is falling, ah, we stand out here as if we are on top of the world. We really enjoy the road. He tried for us, and God will bless him. Roads also serve as a bridge between communities as it encourages socio-cultural activities between different ethnic nationalities. He had an agenda for prosperity for all deltas. He achieved that prosperity subsequently in road construction in Delta State. The entire road in Delta State was constructed. Okowa is a great man. He has tried to the extent they called him road master. He has tried as a person. If the road is not good, people will not come to attend the event. People attend it because there's a good road that leads everybody to the place. The man is really trying in Delta State. Knowing the importance of roads to the overall development and well-being of Deltans, the Okoa-led administration over the past four years has either built from the scratch or rehabilitated over 455 roads across the state, including the Riverine that hitherto was tagged difficult terrain. These roads serve as links and unite peoples in the upland and the Riverine. Not long ago, the Nigerian Vice President Yemi Oshibajo commissioned one of such critical infrastructures, the 19.7-kilometer road that connects several communities in Ogula Kingdom and also the main XL road in Okurekoko, Wari Southwest local government area. <laughs> I want 
to commend His Excellency the Governor on uh, this major achievement in a neighborhood and area that had been neglected and had not had uh, this type of road. So I now commission this road project for the benefit of the people of the Ogla Kingdom and Delta State and to the glory of God. We've never seen this in the inception of democracy to do a road in the riverine community. Because what we've only heard, people always say they are already developing the urban. But the governor makes us know that the government can also develop the rural community and bring more development in terms of infrastructure, health, and education, which is one of which you can see today. As you can see, the entire community they are very, very happy. It is this present government of that state that has been able to come to the riverine areas to have constructed roads since the creation of the jobs of this part of Nigeria. And this has come to improve a means of livelihood. The roads will make people to bring in their personal cars to drive here. It will attract more development. It will bring in more businesses. Governor Kowa is a governor of the people. We are very happy for the road when they do now. So the road is very beautiful. So we like the road. In fact, we appreciate governor for what he do for us. We are very happy. We enjoy the road so much. When we are driving bike in this time before, we cannot last. But now, today, people are enjoying the road that Okowa did for us. So we appreciate Okowa. These different roads that span a total of 1,269.42 kilometers and 517.34 kilometers of line drainage have encouraged commerce as well as social integration of deltans across ethnic lines. I've been suffering without this road. Now that this road is here, it will solve so many problems. Commerce, normal transport, business and mobility. So we are so grateful to the Delta State Governor who did this. Our joy knows no bounds. Senator Dr. Ifan Okoha, the Executive Governor, is a God sent Governor to Oglaha Kingdom. All the good people of Oglaha Kingdom is now rejoicing over this road project because it links Obotobo 1, Obotobo 2, Sakibolo, Yokri communities, which are part of Oglaha Kingdom. And they are all happy because is going to boost commercial activities here. And first of its kind, we've seen the presence of the state government in this place. There are communities around that this road will enable us to go as in freely. Initially, it will find it difficult to, to maybe transport persons and uh, goods, but now I think because of the road, it's very, very free and easy. The Delta State Government has moved beyond roads within its constitutional jurisdiction to work on federal roads. Prominent among the roads in question are Wari Saple Road, Eku Abraka Abo, and Asaba Onicha Expressway. These roads are used by Deltans and play major role in socio-economic integration as well as cultural linkages. His Excellency taught it wise that there's need for us to fix these roads. These federal roads are very important. Well, of course, we know it's the responsibility of the federal government to construct and maintain these roads. Therefore, the fact that it's being used by our people and has some impact on our economy, we have no reason not to repair these roads for our people to use. Since two months now, we did this road. Now here they say, before we went on, shall we they suffer. But now I hear say, Governor Kowa, one can't do the road for us. I, I like them and they're very happy. Make it do it for us. As they do the road, so we go not say yes. Say ah, the road all oh, good. We go feed the pass now. Everywhere go there, nobody go street us. We are grateful. He's a nice governor. He's a good man. Over the years, markets have been an age-long facility and infrastructure that brings the people together. Apart from being a point of commerce, it has also served as a meeting point for socializing and integration. People from neighboring communities have always displayed their produce and wares in major markets located in other communities.
Under the watch of Governor Ifanyo Kowa, the Delta State Government, through the Ministry of Trade and Investment, has upped the ante with the building of modern markets. Just like in the days of old, the markets still attract traffic from neighboring communities and villages to sell and socialize. Some ready examples are the Sapele, Brutu, Urerope, Owalero, Obogonogo markets, and many more. These points of commerce are rallying grounds for Deltans across ethnic divides, and they do business, interact, and integrate in a common location. This engenders shared values, cross fertilization of ideas and cultures. If you go to our modern markets, that is no Bogonogo, Saple, and the other places where our governor's network of the Fanyoko has put up, you will see that it goes beyond the community or even the local government where such market is also designated. People come and share ideas beyond just coming to buy or sell. So, market is a place where people of different training, people of different ideas come together to see themselves, exchange ideas beyond just buying and selling. Without uh, happiness, people cannot come to you. Business needs happiness, smile with good hearts. Like, for example, my neighbors, some Sao Sao Robos, Benin, we all together here yeah, and always feel happy. His market brought us together because we came to find what we are going to use to train our children and to build our home. Market unifies people. You get to meet all kinds of people, different types, tribes, personalities and so on. So Kowa is trying, he's a very nice governor. He's trying to the Delta State. He's a hard-working governor. Modern settlements and satellite towns are also very important factors when looking at rural-urban integration. Housing, for instance, has served as a bridger to this effect. A good example is the 650 housing units at Isilazaba. People from the neighboring communities and city center in Asaba have found a rallying point in this new settlement. This is a plus to the Delta State Government as this piece of PPP has served as a rallying point for Deltans of diverse backgrounds. It has a far reaching effect in social engineering and social integration. So, housing scheme and housing development you cannot quantify the impact in facilitating peace, uh, facilitating social cohesion. Uh, also facilitating development of a place. The 650 uh, housing units, the Nisela Zaba, no doubt is going to foster unity, it's going to foster development, it's going to breed oneness, and most importantly, it's going to open up uh, the state capital development axis. When people of diverse background come to stay together, they share their cultural values together and outlook about life. So it has impacted on us positively economically. The administration has built more hospitals and other health institutions as well as established more educational institutions that have helped to integrate the people. The government has really done a lot in the educational sector. In the area of renovation of classroom blocks, it has really improved teaching and learning. The other state government did fit to build this edifice for us and we are enjoying it. It's fantastic. It is properly furnished and equipped. More students are happy to come to school. If you look at the state of our hospital before it became the governor and what it is right now, he has done a lot. Particularly in the teaching hospital and the specialist hospital. He has done very, very well. Because of his medical background, he's been able to improve the health sector so much that the people of the other states are happy of what he's doing in the health sector. 30 years back, we did not see this kind of thing. Women delivered locally. By this time around, they have a health center where they go and take free medical treatment. This is a purely a riverine community. It's not funny. If you don't have a health center in places like this, thousands of people will die within a second. I want to thank Governor Kowa for this opportunity given to the people of this village. He has done so much in terms of health. In a nutshell, the Governor Kowa-led administration has blurred the fine lines 
that highlight a division between rural and urban settlements in Delta State, making the people one.